Hello everybody! Also, it's 3 p.m. and the sun is going down, so please fret not if the lighting changes astronomically. I do, I do apologize. In the month of January 2021, I managed to read between six and seven books. It should be about seven by the time you're seeing this video because I'm currently working on the seventh and almost done and super duper, super duper enjoying it. The first novel I read this month was One Day in December by Josie Silver, which is kind of supposed to be like a Christmassy, holiday-esque rom-com. More, more rom than com. It's kind of sad a lot of the time. I started out really loving this book. I listened to it on audiobook and it switches perspective between our two main characters, which is fun and I really enjoy when they actually switch narrators for that sort of audiobook. However, at the end of the day, this wasn't the book for me. It follows our main character, Lord who one day on a bus sees this man and thinks, wow, he's the one for me. And he looks at her, his name's Jack by the way, he looks at her and he thinks, wow, that's the girl for me. But alas, the bus takes off and they never see each other again. Lori spends the next year looking in cafes and bus stops and everywhere in London, I believe that's where they live, trying to find Jack, but to no avail. Until one day, I think it's a Christmas party or a New Year's party, one of the two, Lori's roommate and best friend Sarah introduces Lori to her new boyfriend, who is Jack. The book follows them for about a decade, which I do enjoy. I think it's really fun to follow characters as they grow and mature and experience the highs and lows of life. I, it just wasn't the right book for me. I'd heard wonderful things about it and I definitely see the appeal, but at the end of the day, I found the two main characters quite boring and Jack did the least. Like he got praised for the tiniest little things that I would just think would be like customary in friendships and relationships. I don't know, maybe my standards are too high. If so, I blame YA fiction. It was definitely a fun read. I did only give it, I think, two stars or 2.5 stars, but you know, if you're in a rom com -y sort of mood, it's the book for you. I personally wasn't because I was freaking out about Inauguration Day. I was really worried. Thankfully, it went relatively smoothly. The next book I read was Between the World and Me by Ta-Nehisi Coates, which is a memoir or even a letter, I suppose, to his son. And it's really about what it means to be black and a black man in the United States. It's a very poignant book and it took me a long time to read. This was a book for school, which is a delight because my school is finally putting an emphasis on incorporating diverse books into our curriculum, which is so exciting. Even though they kind of did a subpar job this time, I have hope for the future. But like I was saying, I read this book relatively slowly. I think I only read about two pages a day according to my spreadsheet because it was a lot to take in and I wanted to really take my time with it. I really wanted to make sure that I was reading every word and taking it all in and saving time for some meditation and reflection afterwards. Coates had a lot of really great insight into the educational system. Um, in particular, I really loved his discussion of HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities. It was a stellar novel. It's one that hurts to read, um, but it's really important to read, I think, and I think that it's such a powerful step and I'm so proud of my school for, you know, deciding to take it on because teaching books about the black experience in America can be really uncomfortable and that's the point. We need to confront our history. So, in the words of Amanda Gorman, who is my new favorite person ever, we can learn how to repair it. And if not repair it, learn what not to do in the future and how we can do better. Apart from the fact that I read it for school, I was going to read it anyway. Um, I'm a part of an organization this year called Students Organized Against Racism. And tomorrow we start something called Courageous Conversations About Race. So I'll be missing two days of school for this. It's training um, and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm hoping that I'm able to learn a lot and um, just become a more productive member of society in terms of social justice. Next, I read The Queen's Gambit. Guys, don't worry, I'm gonna do a whole video on it. You bet I will. And I'll totally steal my sister's chessboard for the thumbnail because of course. The Queen's Gambit was a book before it was a show, but you're most likely familiar with it on Netflix starring Anya Taylor-Joy, who is amazing. Oh, also the kid from uh, Love Actually. The Queen's Gambit follows Beth Harmon, who is a chess prodigy, but she's had a very difficult life. She was orphaned at a young age. Her parents had a dysfunctional relationship and she quickly falls into spirals of addiction, whether that be with tranquilizers provided to her by her orphanage or later in the novel, alcohol. It shows the fine line between genius and like the tragedy that comes with it. It's also super fun because 
because it's incredibly detailed. So if you're really into chess, or maybe not even into chess, but just into meticulous details and just fun facts, you'll totally love this because almost every chess game that Beth plays is written in such exquisite nuance and detail and I had such fun with it. I'm currently in the midst of watching the limited series and when I'm done with that I'm going to do a video comparing the book to the show in the most wonderful way possible. I told my dad that and he was like why they're gonna be different and you're gonna be down on the show. No 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 no. we're gonna talk about the merits of each and move on. Then I read The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. I did enjoy this book. I did not think that I would necessarily. I've kind of moved away from YA uh, in the past couple of years but it was really fun. It follows our main character character Blue and these boys that go to this really rich and pompous school called Aglianby, Aglianby, something like that. Uh, the friendship they make over this quest to find Glendower, who is this like king of Wales, I believe. It had some mythology in there. It had some stuff about magic and psychics because Blue's family is composed of entirely female psychics. It was just fun. I enjoyed the mystery aspect. I thought the villain, who you'll find out who that is later, was a little underdeveloped, but I digress. It was a good time. I don't think I'll be continuing with the series. I've heard that there are some problems with racism and classism and how they're dealt with, um, but only time will tell. And if I do read them, we'll be sure to look at them through a critical light. It's totally cool to enjoy stuff as long as you acknowledge its flaws. This was so fun. I read The Convenience Store Woman. I believe it was by Sayaka Murata, I want to say. This was a quirky book. Really short, only about three hour audiobook, but it was so much fun. If you enjoyed Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman, then this will be a book you really enjoy. It's about our main character whose name is Keiko and her experience as a convenience store worker in Japan and kind of of the social pressures that she feels that she faces. For example, people expect her either to have a much higher up job, white collar job, or be married. Neither of which she wants. She loves the convenience store. It's become a part of her life. She's worked there for 18 years. She also has a hard time just conforming to social norms in particular. A lot of the time she mimics the way other people talk in order to get social cues. Um, she's just a very interesting character. On my book spreadsheet every year, I try to track um, the amount, you know, of authors of color I read, POC main characters, LGBTQ+, etc. Um, and I did label this as an LGBTQ plus novel because because in my interpretation, the main character was asexual. But I'd love to hear what you think if you disagree. Also, props to the translator. It was so well translated. Today, I finished The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain after a conversation I'll be having with the literary gladiators, you know, later tonight in like an hour and a half. Fun times. I do videos with them occasionally. I don't think any of them are out yet. They pre-film really far in advance, which is super impressive. I do not do that. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in those conversations, I think they'll be up later this year. The first one probably comes out in April. But I will give a general overview of my thoughts. So I think it's a really fun story. I see why it's a classic. I understand it's a satire on race. I will say I read this one right after reading Between the World and Me by ta Coates. And just the sheer number of times that the n-word was used in Huckleberry Finn was jarring to me, especially, like I said, just because I just finished reading this book about the black male experience in America. I believe I read that Huckleberry Finn has the n-word in it 219 times, which is definitely excessive, and I've done some research on it, and, you know, there are certain teachers who believe that it should be set, the word itself should be set in classrooms, or that replacing it with the word slave takes away from Mark Twain or that the author is being censored in some way. I will say that I think it's okay for students to read in the book that the n-word is there and being used um, as long as it's approached with nuance and care in the classroom. I do not think, however, that white teachers in particular should ever say the actual n-word to their students even when reading the book. When I was a freshman, my English teacher had us read Fences by August Wilson, which is a play, really enjoyed it. However, my English teacher, who is white, also at any time the n-word was said in the play, he read it out loud and it was very uncomfortable and I, I don't think it was the right thing to do. Huck did have a really distinctive voice, which I enjoyed. His friendship with Tom Sawyer and Jim were relatively well developed, um, even if there were some tropes and stereotypes in there, that's very valid. Uh, but it definitely felt like a whirlwind coming of age classic, and that's what I expected it to be. And last but not least, the book I am currently reading is The Princess Bride, uh, originally by S. Morgenstern, but I'm reading the abridged version by 
William Goldman, who also wrote the screenplay for The Princess Bride, as well as the screenplay for uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. I haven't seen either of them, which is a shame. The Princess Bride is a complete joy, complete joy. Um, not only is it fun and bizarre, I know it was also meant to be a satire originally, similarly to Huckleberry Finn, um, but the characters are fun, the writing itself is fun, I love Inigo Montoya, I love, I keep pronouncing it physique in my head, but my dad's corrected me and it's apparently pronounced Fezzik, and he's the giant in the, in the book, it's a wonderful time. The Sicilian is great. Inconceivable! That makes me so happy. I will also say that William Goldman interjects a lot within the book to say, hey, this is me when it's written in italics. It's me talking. William Goldman, not S. Morgan Stern, the original author. And he'll give us insight to his experience reading the book for the first time, his dad reading it to him when he was sick, uh, his adventures trying to introduce it to his own children and his grandson, which are reflected, I believe, in the movie as well. It's just a really good time. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Those are all of the books that I read this month in terms of other media. Like I mentioned, I'm currently watching The Queen's Gambit. I'm trying to catch up on The Crown. I love it, but it's taking me forever. Uh, what else? I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately. I'm very interested in true crime. One of the books I'm reading right now is called Savage Appetites, and it's about um, true crime and why in particular women tend to find it so intriguing. And it's a very interesting book. I have to often uh, think about my own relationship to true crime because one, I find it incredibly entertaining and I love the genre, but it's also pe real people's lives, you know, like their tragedies that I'm deriving entertainment from. Uh, so it's a conflicting, a conflicting interest of mine for sure. I watched a couple documentaries. Oh man, what was it called? I watched this really, really good one about um, the way that women's deaths and homicides are handled in Mexico. It's on Netflix. It's in Spanish. There's subtitles. The Three Deaths of Maricela Escobedo. Uh, so that was in really powerful documentary, very upsetting, um, but also inspiring because as one of, I believe it's a historian or a lawyer says at the end of the documentary, it's a love story about daughters and mothers, even though it's a tragic one at that. Those are all of the books I read this month, all of the media I consumed. I hope you enjoyed this video, maybe got some recommendations, and I'd love to hear what you read or watched or listened to this month in the comments section down below. I will see you all very soon. I hope to be posting more frequently. Um, I've just gotten or started to get over a cold that kind of plagued me for the entirety of January, so I do apologize for my temporary absence. And with that, stay well, stay happy, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.